Whenever I'm taking a little stroll through the crew world that is social media, whether it be on Twitter, whether it be on Facebook, YouTube, or any other type of Dallas Cowboys related forum online, I am usually seeing Jason Garrett take a whole hell of a lot of flack from the Dallas Cowboys fan base. And some of it is warranted, and some of it I feel isn't very warranted at all. So what I wanted to do was take a closer look at the coaching career of Jason Garrett with the Dallas Cowboys and see how successful or unsuccessful Jason Garrett really has been. So to do that, I got to travel way back to 2005 when Garrett got his first shot as a coach in the NFL, becoming the quarterback's coach for the Miami Dolphins under then head coach Nick Saban. Now say what you will. We all know Nick Saban really didn't do too hot with the Miami Dolphins and in the NFL. But on the collegiate level, he's maybe, or at least arguably, the greatest coach of all time. He's on one hell of a run with Alabama. So Nick Saban believed in Jason Garrett by giving him that quarterback's coach job. Then fast forward, let's get to the good stuff, the Dallas Cowboys. In January of 2007, Garrett was hired by the Dallas Cowboys as their offensive coordinator and that whole situation was a, was a little funny because they hired Garrett as the OC before hiring a head coach and as you know that's just not the way businesses ran in the NFL but then again when has Jerry Jones ever been very conventional and here's just another unconventional decision he made hiring Garrett he was the golden child that's what he was marketed as. He was that new, fresh, young head coach, or not head coach, but head coach in waiting that was going to turn around the franchise. And what was best was he was familiar with the winning ways of the Cowboys culture in the 90s. So, hey, everybody, at least at that time, was on board. And, you know, even though he really wasn't empowering the head coach, Wade Phillips, he was already taking decision making out of his hands jerry jones he really did believe in garrett even way back in 2007 now in 2007 the cowboys had one of the best years in recent memory and he guided them to the second highest scoring offense in the league behind only the record setting offense the new england patriots of that same year so in 2008 you know that offseason Jason Garrett, he was a hot commodity. Yes, believe it or not, Jason Garrett was a hot commodity for a head coaching job in the NFL. He was taking interviews with the Atlanta Falcons. He received an offer from them, I believe, over Mike Smith, who they eventually settled on. And the Baltimore Ravens offered the job to Jason Garrett over John Harbaugh at the time, I believe, who, who eventually got the job. But ultimately, Jason Garrett opted to remain in Dallas as the offensive coordinator. And Jerry Jones gave him that carrot, put it in front of him. He signed him to a $3 million a year pay rate. The highest non-head coaching contract in the NFL. That was the highest salary for an assistant coach in the NFL at that time. Then, fast forward a year At the end of 2008, the Detroit Lions were trying to speak to Garrett regarding the team's head coaching vacancy. Uh, The Denver Broncos also interviewed Garrett after they fired uh, Mike Shanahan. And I believe he also was interviewing with the St. Louis Rams for their head coaching position. And I think Steve Spagnuolo took that job. So back in 2007, 2008, Jason Garrett, hey, He was in demand in the NFL as a head coach. Then, let's fast forward a little bit more. In November 8, 2010, Jason Garrett was named the interim head coach of the Cowboys after Wade Phillips was fired after a pathetic 1-7 start to the 2010 season. Garrett won his first game as a head coach when he beat the New York Giants 33-20 at the Meadowlands, and he really turned it around. You know, Garrett finished with a 5-3 record down the stretch, So on January 6, 2011, Jason Garrett was officially named the eighth head coach in Cowboys history. When he turned down two great jobs 
it was very obvious and to me for a lot of people a model it, once you get something in your mind and you focus on it you focus on it hard enough you can turn it into reality and there's a lot of that that i feel jason garrett is about i think he's had his eye on this job a long time and with all that jason garrett became the eighth head coach in franchise history for the dallas cowboys it was more about the way those guys went about doing it and I had the good fortune of being next to Troy Aikman and Michael Irvin. All those guys showed me on a daily basis how to go about it. And uh, again, we talk to our players all the time about approach, being the best you can be, and maximizing the opportunities and the potential that you have. That's what we're going to try to do here. And the next part of the story is the part that the talking heads just love to remind us Cowboys fans seemingly almost every time Jason Garrett's name is brought up on national television. 8-8, eight and 8-8, eight, eight and 8-8. Eight and eight and eight. Yes, yes, it's true. 2011, 2012, and 2013. Three seasons in a row where Jason Garrett and the Dallas Cowboys finished 8-8. Eight and eight. Also, they were eliminated on the last game of the season from the playoffs by every single other team in the NFC East at one time or another. Now, I gotta admit, some of these squads, I, I look at some of the talent on the squad, some of the rosters, and I'm thinking, man, how in the hell did Jason Garrett get this team to 8-8? Eight and eight? But 2011, that first year, really wasn't one of them. I think although that team was starting to become one of the older teams in the league, it had some legitimate talent. The wide receivers, some of the players on defenses, you still had Romo, Witten, them, Dez was starting to come into his own, you still had Miles Austin, but that offensive line... With the exception of a rookie Tyron Smith and a Doug Free at tackle, which was decent at that time, the middle of the line was pathetic. I mean, we're talking about players like Phil Costa. Phil Costa, best known for getting engaged to Hulk Hogan's daughter more than he ever was for anything he did on the field. They were trotting out some mid-round draft pick, David Arkin. I don't know, might as well have been that actor, Alan Arkin. Maybe it was him. I, I don't know. Or how about Kevin Kowalski? Wasn't he like the guy that trained Triple H in the WWE? Kowalski? Something like that. I mean, who are these guys? Bill Nagy! An undrafted free agent, Bill Nagy, was playing center and guard. I mean, what hope did Romo have? Because that's why teams attacked the middle. Because there was no middle of that offensive line. Yet, Jason Garrett and the Cowboys still claimed an 8-8 eight eight record because they still had the talent all around that roster but the game i really look back on the game that i think wow what if on december 4th 2011 the game you know that cardinals game where <laughs> jason garrett iced his own kicker and he may not ever admit it but even the opposing team's head coach ken wisenhunt he got on the podium and said he was glad that jason garrett iced the kicker for him so he didn't have to this game still remains one of the most embarrassing blemishes on the resume of Jason Garrett. Because if they would have won that game, maybe they wouldn't have had to play for the division title the last game of the season. I just remember there being a lot of back and forth between Jason Garrett and the then special teams coordinator, Joe DiCamillis. And after the game at the podium, one of the reporters asked Garrett what he and DiCamillis were talking about on the sidelines. And his answer, just another robotic Garrett answer that many of the fans get frustrated with. He says, I don't have a great answer for you on that. I remember them asking him, should they have spiked the ball? A lot of just different game management type questions. A lot of, you know, clock management type questions. And Jason Garrett kept answering, I don't have a great answer for you on that. And that's just something that I think a lot of fans still think about in their heads and point to. They can point to that time and say... See, there goes the robotic coach, that is Jason Garrett, that just doesn't have a great answer for the Dallas Cowboys. And who could really blame them? Because Jason Garrett went on to <laughs> clap his way to 8-8 eight and eight in the 2012 and 2013 seasons as well. Again, losing to a division rival in the last game of the season. But, although it's not an excuse, still, I believe having a weak offensive line that at that time, Jason Garrett and the front office was retooling because in 2014 with Garrett sitting on the hot seat, Jason Garrett goes 12 and four, wins the NFC East and goes on to win a playoff game against the Detroit Lions 
in Arlington, Texas. In 2015, the team was marred by injuries. Tony Romo went down early in the season with the broken collarbone. Des Bryant went down in the very first game of the season with the broken foot. And the team just didn't have any confidence in the backup quarterbacks, which were Brandon Whedon and Matt Castle. Now again, is part of that on the head coach? Yeah, because he should have stepped up to the plate and told the front office, I need a viable option at backup quarterback just in case the frail Tony Romo goes down. And he paid the price in 2015. The Cowboys went 4-12 and that season. But here's something that a lot of the Garrett detractors may not like to hear. That is Jason Garrett's only losing season as the Cowboys head coach. And if you remember, the backup quarterback situation was horrible. But outside of that, the man has never had a losing record as a head coach. You got to give him something. Look, I am not the biggest fan of Garrett on game day. Like I talked about that Arizona Cardinal debacle. I think he has some questionable game management skills i think he has some very questionable clock management skills but when it comes to preparing his team and the team not giving up on him i think garrett is amongst some of the best coaches in the nfl today he is a master motivator the opposite of a wade phillips who was fired after going one and seven because the team basically gave up on him this team throughout all its years has never given up on jason garrett even in that four and twelve season that team still played hard it was ugly it was hard to watch but that team was still trying as opposed to the team we saw early on in the 2010 season under wade phillips that team had had just wrote the season off after a few games and i think that's something that jerry jones truly values this team does not give up on jason garrett so in turn jerry jones will not give up on Jason Garrett but in come Stephen Jones and I think it's a whole new ball game for Jason Garrett Stephen Jones like I think both myself and a lot of the fan base in the Cowboys nation we want a lot more than a division title we want a lot more than eight and eight for damn sure and I don't know about you guys out there listening but I'm kind of tired about getting bounced out in the divisional round I've been a Cowboys fan since 1992 and it's about time that i get excited for a super bowl or at least something that i haven't seen in 20 plus years give me an nfc championship game that is something that garrett has had more than enough time to put his philosophy in place he put his program in place he has the players he wants and i don't think there's any excuse for the cowboys not to be Super Bowl contenders going into the 2019 season and Jason Garrett is back on the hot seat just like he was in 2014 but this time we need better than a divisional loss to the Green Bay Packers in Lambeau Field we need an NFC championship game I'd love to host one better yet I'd like to win a Super Bowl now with all that being said Jason Garrett is the coach who can't win that can be taken literally that can be taken figuratively You can take it in just about a million different directions because no matter who you talk to, Jason Garrett can't win. You talk to some of the Jason Garrett detractors and it doesn't matter what this dude does as the head coach, he can't win. Ah, he's a carrot. Ah, he's a robot. All he does is clap. When's he going to chew somebody out like Parcells and Jimmy? Look, that's just not his style. Every time I see some of these players making mistakes on the field, Jason Garrett gets blamed for it. And look, as the head coach, I think some of that is valid, but not all of it. The head coach isn't responsible for 100% of the blame of these losses. And if he is, why isn't he responsible when the Cowboys are having a great season, like they did in 2014 and 2016? A lot of people refuse to acknowledge Jason Garrett as one of the top coaches in the NFL, or at the very least acknowledge that he did one hell of a job coaching a rookie quarterback to the best record in the NFC in 2016. If you're going to criticize Jason Garrett, you should at least be fair about it and give him his props when he has a good coaching season. Admittingly, I believe we've seen a lot of mediocre coaching from Jason Garrett. I don't think he's a terrible coach, but I don't think he's a great one either. But he's had enough time to learn on this job 
Like I mentioned earlier, he's had enough time to put his system in place. I think Cowboys fans have had enough time being starved out of a Super Bowl. So Jason Garrett, you're the coach that can't win. Because if you get us to a Super Bowl, who knows? That may be the only way you can win. Especially with the Dallas Cowboys fan base. As ravenous as it is.